For a finishing touch, you might like to add a badge or two. A good source is key fobs from which the metal badges can be removed and stuck in your car in places such as the nose cone and the centre of the steering wheel. Looks easy enough. Welcome to my Lotus Super 7 home build car, commonly referred to as low cost 7 because it's low cost because you build it with bits and bobs. As you can see, the hard part has been done. Previous owner Kevin has already built the frame, which saves us about six months of boring videoing. So let's get acquainted with what I have sitting here. As you can see, this is a space frame chassis made from one inch tubular steel. From plans, tried and tested over the last 20, 30 years. So we know it works. The front end has independent suspension. Lower control arm is not fitted, obviously. Rack and pinion steering, loosely mocked up for now. And then working our way to the back, we have independent rear suspension. Now the original plans asked or called for a solid rear axle. So this has obviously been modified or the plans have been modified over the years to incorporate independent rear suspension which makes the whole thing even better. Now, obviously, I'm not sure what the previous owner had planned in terms of rear axle, rear hub, carrier, diff, all that kind of thing. So I do need to contact him to see if this is worth continuing with this design or if I have to refabricate stuff. But knowing Kevin, I'm sure this was all made very precisely to a specific plan. The frame itself looks extremely nice, well put together, very straight, but he did warn me that there was a lot of welds that were needing finished. You can see a lot of half done welds. So it's kind of, I would say about 80% welded. So I need to go through the whole thing with a fine tooth comb and find out what I need to finish up. It's possible that Kevin has not finished welding some parts because there was maybe other sections to go on. For example, if there was a section to go on from here over to there, it's possible that he left that unwelded for now. But as I say, I'll find that out later. So I do have all the control arms, which I will mock up later. I also have this big box of bits and I can see straight away that I've got a couple of hub carriers, a couple of hubs. They've got tape over the end, so the bearings presumably are still in there. And we'll see what else we've got in the box of goodies. We have one front hub carrier with lower ball joint. Looks new, that's very nice. Rear control arm. Front lower control arm. Another front lower control arm. They look the same, so they're possibly interchangeable. Yeah, they look exactly the same. Rear upper control arm. The other one is already on the car. Bit of, uh, what is that, three quarter inch round steering shaft, it's got a spline, it's got a wibbly bit there. Another front hub carrier with another brand new ball joint. It looks brand new, the rubber's like, like uncracked and soft and supple. Pretty sure these are going to be sided, so I need to mock them up and see which one goes where. Two hubs, uh, five lug. I think these are actually off of a Mazda. Here's a clue for the future. 
There's the tape, so behind the tape is a nice oiled bearing. So, two of them. There's no tape in this one, but the bearing is there, so I'll maybe just clean that up and put some tape over that. Brake calipers. Another caliper. This is actually a Ford caliper, so I may be, I may be mistaken with the carriers. But this one is different from those two. Another uh, caliper carrier. This looks like a section that has been trimmed off, probably for access for something, but I can always weld that back on or make a new one. It looks fairly straightforward to make that. Another bit of random frame that's been cut off for some reason. Another Ford brake caliper. So I have I have four brake calipers, but only two carriers for them. I have two tie rods, completely different from each other. Not sure. Not sure where they're for. If they're for the front or the back, that one looks new. And we have two steering U-joints. That's got a square hole, another square hole. That one is a small splined hole. That one is a big three quarter inch round hole. So that's the spares we have at the moment. Let's mock up what we've got. Unfortunately, I can't mock up this side. Those bits of steel that were chopped off hold on the lower and upper uh, control arms. So that's all I can really mock up for now. I don't really want to put the, the hubs in the front until they're all cleaned up because I don't want to put dirt and grit into the, the bearings that have been protected over the years. So let's have a wee look at the front. Now, I can't actually put these ball joints in because they go in from the underside. As you can see, there's that collar there, so that would need to get pressed in from the underside, which means I need to take the whole thing out and do that. So for mock-up, it's just going to sit on top. This adjustable tie rod means that I do have camber adjustment. I've got a camber uh, toe in toe out adjustment with the steering obviously but I'm not seeing any way of caster adjustment so either you're going to have to set that up spot on right at the start with all your, your brackets or I need to get some form of adjustable caster you know to allow the, the front hub assemblies to slope up or down which helps you with keeping the car in a straight line when you're not steering you know what I'm talking about if you don't know what I'm talking about then why are you here? This is fairly technical stuff. <laughs> okay, but movement wise, obviously, you can see that the hub is staying parallel, uh, vertical. Yeah, vertical, we'll go with that. 
So you would have your lower coilover mounted there and obviously I need to make some sort of mount for the top of the, the spring. The spring does go at quite an angle, it doesn't come straight up and down, it goes at that sort of angle. Looks pretty good, feels really solid and it's only just it's only just mocked up, so really pleased with her so far. The rear is pretty much the same. You've got the, the top control arm lower. However, I really have no idea what sort of hub carrier is meant to go on this until I speak to Kevin. I won't know if I need to source that part or make something new. But as before, I think he's installed these just as you know, temporary mock-up. He maybe had a bar going from there, threaded rod or something, up to... Oh, wow, it's way up here. So the rear coilover goes from there down to... Mm, that's too long. Nope, I need to consult the Kevin or consult the book. But as I say, very similar. You've got your half shafts going along there from the hub to a differential. Differential sits in the middle, prop shaft all the way along there gearbox and engine. Speaking of engine, I have sourced my engine and transmission. But because I'm a total dick, I'm not going to tell you what it is until it's sitting right here. So you need to wait, hopefully, on the next episode of this build to find out what I'm doing. I'm like insanely excited about this and I think my choice is going to completely melt your brain. Mm-hmm. If you want to take a guess at what engine I'm putting in this, please leave a comment. I'll give you one clue. It's not electric. Sorry, green people. It's pretty much the opposite of electric. Ooh, another clue. Okay, before you go, remember, I have a Patreon page set up, and I don't know why I'm pointing to the whiteboard yet. If you grab a Patreon membership, your name goes on the big whiteboard of... I need to stop swearing, so it's just a big whiteboard for now. Very much appreciated. Let's face it, I'm not going to be able to build this without help. And as long as I keep on churning out entertaining videos, it'll be worth your money. Take care, everyone. See you tomorrow.